Hey guys, it's Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bullet journal setup, which is something I've never done on my channel. So it's actually 21 minutes long, or 23 rather. If you're keen, do keep watching to see how I'm going to set up my bullet journal. Now ideally, I did not plan on doing a bullet journal this year. As you know, I already have a 2020 journaling system video. I will link it down below for you. But I figured that I lacked something and that was actually a social media tracker. I mean, my social media posts generally go on my planners and I think it's really nice to actually have a notebook or a journal rather to have everything housed there. So that was the overall theme for this bullet journal. So it's actually a bullet journal for social media tracking and content management. And the stationery I picked out were mostly related to growth because I'm cheesy like that because you know social media growth and all these things like organic and whatever. So yeah I decided to pick out some of my favorite stationery that had that sort of feel. So you'll see that most of the stationery here are picked out from my stash and I really chose specific colors that I wanted to go with it. Also because I think I've never really done anything that's kind of like this in this vibe because usually I do a lot of vintage colors but I don't really deal with flowers and I recently got a lot of new stuff so I thought using them on this post on this spread would be ideal. So here I'm setting up the first page. So the reason why I didn't really do bullet journals over the past few years is because I am very scared and I'm very prone to make mistakes. I'm also very messy as you can see here and I think my issue is really I'm very OC and my perfectionism can get the best of me and I don't know if that is actually doable because I've seen a lot of bullet journal videos and a lot of people have said that you don't have to make it perfect as long as it's nice but for me for example I can't do it when the line isn't straight I won't write in it and things like that. That's also why I precisely chose this Midori MD notebook which was in grid. I got this like a couple of months ago from Malaysia because I needed a notebook for like idea dumps so I thought I'd put this one for it but apparently I'm using it now for my bullet journal. I was contemplating on getting either a dotted one or a grid one because I have done bullet journaling but I've never done a setup video. I did do bullet journaling during 2018. I had a Loisturm bullet journal which I used up to the brim but after that I started to not use it anymore. So. Here is my bullet journal. Long story short, something um, was an error in the front page. That's why I had to re-edit some of the parts. But anyway, I covered it with that um, pattern washi in the middle, as you can see. So yeah, my theme is very organic. I wanted to incorporate a lot of greens, browns, and a bit of like old rose slash mauve pink because that's the color I'm really into right now. So. As you can see, um, most of my handwriting is really, really small, and that's gonna be very consistent in the next few minutes. So first I'm starting with this index. Now since this journal is not really numbered, I personally don't feel the need to number it. Also because I don't really check it by numbers. I did buy a lot of index stickers, so I'm gonna definitely use those especially if I need some stuff that have importance and also I'm using the index stickers anyway for the monthly spreads. So here you'll have the journal overview of what you will see. I actually plotted it on my Hobonichi weeks for um, good measure because you know I tend to forget a lot of things. So yeah I think the heavy one would be the monthly overview because I have a lot in store for every month but generally the index is pretty straightforward like the usual bullet journal. I also picked out super simple symbols because I'm not very keen on making new ones and these have worked for me in the past couple of years that I've done bullet journaling. So this is me being fancy and adding a lot of stamps because I recently got these from Mujoshi and I love the theme they're very like um stationary related books and I really want to incorporate that because that's well part of what I do basically as a content creator and artist. There are instances where I actually um, put the embellishments first before the text but since this was like you know I wanted to make sure that the text was the primary part of this page I thought starting it with that would work better in this situation. So I'm adding more tape because I love adding tape. 
so I tend to put it in areas that don't really have a lot of you know things going on just so everything looks like balanced from afar so let's flip over to the next page now I will start working on my future log which is my favorite part of the bullet journal for some reason I recently got a lot of new stamps as well, so I am putting them to good use and saying that they are for bullet journaling because that's really a very valid excuse, I think. I also got this um, set of monthly stamps from Shopee and I really like the color. I think it wasn't really expensive. No, sorry, I didn't like the color. I like the font, to be honest, because it's really hard to find a good font for stamps and I'm very picky with my serifs. So I'm going to use those um, stamps to label all my months. So the reason why I personally am using a future log is because for the next couple of months, I do have some content already lined up. It's just that I have not produced them and at the same time, I have not fleshed out what I really wanted. And you might be wondering like, Abby, why are you making a content um, bullet journal for your content? But the thing is, I did try doing Excel before, but it really did not work for me. I think it's just the analog in me that really wants to write things down. Like I still end up like writing random stuff in my work notebook. It's like, oh, I'm gonna write about my um, my content for the week, my ideas, blah, blah blah. And I never filter it properly, and I never end up putting it on my Excel. So I'm like, why am I still on digital if I could actually just put it here? But then I do work with Asana for my um, planning with the team so I think that works but in terms of like planning for ideas and compiling things it's still very mandatory for me to see everything at a large scale inside a notebook versus on screen also there's this possibility of you know I like deleting a lot of things for some reason because I need to clear up my space like you know this video actually took 20 gig so I had to delete a lot of things so I don't want to risk that as well so by doing this I think it's better for me in general and also for the future. Here is a very cool peel off tape that I think you've seen if you've watched my previous video. So what I do with uh, future logs is I put the months on the left side and the right side is actually just free space for me to write stuff. I would write like on first week what will happen, second week, third week, fourth week the content but also I could like prioritize like for example if I come out with a series this month then I could put that on the top part but I'm not gonna do it yet because I have to figure out my life first because I'm not sure about my um, my content yet as of this writing maybe just for January I haven't really like thought about it that much so now I'm just adding some clear stamps to embellish the area I always add this at the last part just to make sure I don't like over decorated because this is primarily meant for writing and I don't want to sacrifice that because apart from you know being aesthetic and all it has to be functional and that is my goal so let's move on to the next page apparently I have to do the last quarter I think it's also nice that I was able to divide them into quarters because it's easier for me also to see my months as they go so quarters but actually this isn't a quarter but I always think it's a quarter but whatever it's like divided into three or four and that for me is fine I think it's also um, necessary to see this at the start when you do your bullet journaling. I mean, for me, it really has helped because I get to see a year, an overview, and like what specific days I need to check, what schedules I have to take note of with regards to like sponsored posts, posts I have to roll out at specific times of the month, of the year, and you know, all this like content stuff basically. I realize that it's funny because when I started out blogging, like, 10 years ago, there wasn't really anything about content, like plotting everything, it was really just like, okay, I'm gonna update my blog today, but you know, these days, everything is really like tracked. And not that I'm not a fan of it, I just think that it's really like crazy, but it's an actual thing right now, it's an actual job. So here I'm just covering up my very, very um, shallow mistake of putting the month first, because I was too excited to set up my month. So I forgot, I still have to write my 2020 strategy and social media cheat sheets and passwords so this is what I'm doing now trying to salvage the page thank goodness I saw this really nice big sticker to cover it up and I think at this point my glue tape has finished also so then I have to go back to my glue stick so yeah it's really just about um, figuring out how to plot stuff on a page generally over the years I think I've improved on this before I used to over decorate a lot of my spreads but now I feel like 
I am at this point where I can like balance everything out and that for me is very satisfying. I also think it's a designer thing because I grew up mostly working with design stuff and freelance work so my the way I look at things is very design and layout oriented so I think that's also why my work is hence like this. So I'm just using this um, new pen that I got. I forgot the name. It's like Emoti or something. Let me just link it down below for you. I'll link all of my materials down below. But I'm just going to be writing my 2020 strategy. Now, if you've known me for a while or if you've known about my past life, I was a strategic planner at, a, at an advertising agency. So that meant that we had to make strategies for brands and at the same time um, coordinate on campaigns so I kind of am applying what I'm learning from this from my past job to my strategy for my brand which is the shop and me and doing the work so you'll basically just see the things there um, this isn't really a general a very specific overview of my strategy because I didn't want to put it here because you know some things I have to keep top secret but just to give you an idea, this is what my audience is, my focus is, and what type of content I roll out. For this year, I really just wanted to focus more on art because the past few years, I've been posting a lot of travel photos. I keep traveling, going places, but honestly, that's not really what I really want to do. I really just want to share art and help other people discover their creativity. So if I were to really plan this out, I, had like, I would have like five pages of my strategy all laid out, but... Let's just leave that for my work notebook because that's going to be too geeky. I think by seeing this page at a glance, I'll be able to get a grasp of my strategy in case I forget about it, in case I need to refer to my old notes, I don't need to look at another notebook. I'm like, what am I, what am I supposed to do? What type of content do I have to put, put out? Then I will just look at this page and feel like I know the answers. So next, let's move on to another spread. So this is the social media cheat sheet. I found this on Google. I will link it down below. It's very informative. But I didn't already add the other social media flat platforms that I don't use. So I'm just going to um, be incorporating Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and blog. I always forget this and I always get like dumbed out when I figure out like stuff that I have to Photoshop or like photos I have to send, the quality of images, the crop and everything. Like I always, what's in my head is like I need a landscape photo and a square photo because I usually use square for Instagram. So by having this cheat sheet, I feel like I, ha I am in control of what I have to do in terms of sizing. So I also omitted the minimal part, minimum part because I don't want it to be low quality. So I'm just going to be writing down the optimal size which is ideally the best size and then maximum so maximum I'm not sure if my computer can take it so let's just see how that goes but you no know, just keeping it there for reference is always a good idea I won't be filming the opposite page because that is the passwords page so now let's move on to the first quarter of the year so this is my bad I wrote January February March it's supposed to be January to April but anyway, I'm using the Yosogo alphabet set. I really love this set. I really love my Cyrus, basically. And I love how it contrasts with the light blue grid of the Midori notebook. It's really, really great. So I'm just gonna add some stuff, you know, make it a little cute. Start the first quarter right. And I decided to put a first quarter page because I wanted my focus and my goals to be all laid out properly in one page. Just so I know, again, what I'm going to do in the next couple of months I think this is really necessary because when you look at things from a very macro perspective like a year it really makes you feel over well for me it makes me feel really overwhelmed and again I have a lot of things lined up per quarter so through this I'll be able to streamline everything and make sure everything goes according to plan in coordination also with my other planners my work planner and my daily planner so yeah, that is going to be my focus for this year. So you can see the journaling challenge, management, and the shop. And I'm planning to do a digital shop soon, so I have to work on that as well. It's going to be a lot of sit-down work, drawing work, but it's going to be fine. So I'm using these uh, index from the Traveler's Factory that I got for this year. They came in a lot of colors, so I gave one to my sister and one I'm using. And then this is the other one that I'm using. The brown one, it fits perfectly with the theme of my bullet journal. 
So this is the actual January page, my friends. This is the actual January page that is for real now because the last time I was in a hurry. So yeah, I'm just adding these um, stamps. I got this from Papier Platz. I really love this design. I'm also using the Mild Liner brush pens. I really, really love this dark brown color. And then I'm also using some craft cuts from Pape Maruti. Would you believe these only cost like, I think it's like 20 pesos, so it's really, really affordable. And again, I really like the organic feel of it. And I'm adding a bit more to sort of enhance things. So my top tip for things like these is like you see how everything is very square and like, you know, everything square rectangle. I try to add a lot of texture as well, like tickets or other elements and try to like pose the, pose everything in a very like imbalanced way so when you look at things it's like ooh, they kind of like blend but also they don't I don't know what am I actually explaining but yeah and then I added this divider to sort of like draw the eye from the left side to the right side because the right side is technically the most important part of the month which is my content ideas log so I decided to put this log because again I have a lot of ideas and they're everywhere they're on my phone notes they're on my journals they're on my planners and basically I can't keep track of them anymore so through this I'm putting the working title category uh, call to action and notes and etc you'll see that some of the videos here have already been published actually so I'm just gonna put them there for reference and just so I know that they've already been published because I think it's really important for me to see everything again it's not just digitally but also in an analog way so I'm using these red pens to mark the uh, filmed ones and the published ones and now let's move on to the next page which is the YouTube tracker and blog and Instagram tracker so it's my first time actually logging a tracker I just realized so it was really daunting for me to like do all these rulers and like I don't know I'm not counting my grids I'm so ugh, I'm so out of it but anyway, just to generalize it, the YouTube tracker is basically for me to figure out if I already uploaded a video on YouTube, shared it on my Instagram, shared it on my Instagram stories, uploaded it on Facebook, linked it out on my blog, and all these social media platforms that I need to cross promote. So what I keep forgetting is like when you put a video out, you're like, okay, I'm done, but then you still have to promote it everywhere so people can see it. It's not just like YouTube's gonna put it out for you. I mean, that's also one of the reasons why you get the views, but you know, you gotta propagate it within your circle. So I always say like the website is my house and like the social media platforms are like my rented apartment. So yeah, I'm very corny like that. But anyway, that's that's the whole idea between behind that. For the blog and Instagram tracker, I was actually thinking if I should do like a daily um, blog, but then I was like, no, let's just do it week two, week three, week four, generally because week one's already done. But um, this is basically, uh, me logging when I'm gonna post it because the content ideas can actually be I write them everywhere so here I will have a better list and what happens is I tend to shift the content or mix it up like sometimes I don't post on Wednesdays and then the post that's supposed to be on Friday will be for Wednesday so here I will be able to log them properly and I think that's going to be a really big help for me I also put my newsletter because I usually have a theme for my weekly newsletter so I'm gonna be putting that here so that I know that the, continu the continuity of the content would be really um, valuable for the reader. So I also put some mandatories in case I forget because these are things that I always tell myself but I always forget because I am that person. So yeah, I think I'm done with this spread. It's actually not that hard, I thought I realized. So let's move on to the next spread. The next spread is my ad expenses tracker. So my ad expenses tracker is basically um, I tend to spend sometimes on Facebook or Instagram to promote workshops, events, or sign up links. So that's where that the ad expenses go. But in recent months, I haven't really promoted anything. So um, yeah, I don't know why I'm gonna put that. But just in case, there are also some things that I have to pay for. For example, like if I wanna upgrade my Instagram scheduling platform, which I have not thought of upgrading yet but um, our shop uses later later.com is a really really great platform for scheduling personally I don't schedule my Instagram posts because I schedule I plan it with Unum but I don't schedule it so I don't have to pay for anything I schedule I just save it in drafts 
so yeah I'm just putting this um, list just in case I spend for anything then I have a grand total there at the bottom so I can compute everything and add them to my finances so the miscellaneous ones I don't know if I end up buying an app oh I did buy Nietzsche so I have to probably um, put it there it was on sale for 50 off so it's I think it was just like nine dollars for a year supply of all these really nice um, collage things and it's great for Instagram stories as well so I am putting the Instagram insights tracker because I am licensed under no the, sorry the account I got was the creator account I use creator profile I, I got the business profile profile before but I shifted to creator profile and anyway, you get to see all the insights and stuff, and I thought it would be nice to log them down because there's a lot of math involved, but here I just want to see how my engagement is every few days because it really fluctuates. I remember when I was offline for a time, the, the views were of course really low, but then it sort of like, it's in peaks or in waves depending also if it's like a holiday or the content I post consistently is like differing, but since this year I'm trying out not posting a lot more about my travels but more about my art i want to be able to monitor it i also put my shop because the shop i'm also trying to grow organically not just in terms of the local market but also internationally as i plan to um do more international shipping in the coming months so i think this is going to be really helpful for me in the long run to see everything again the real reason why i put out this bullet journal is really just to see everything from a macro perspective but also be able to you know attest to my goals and see where they take me because there's nothing really like writing everything down so this is my last spread i am doing a monthly analysis and this is just me because i like reflecting on my month like what content i put up and everything so here is the final flip through of this bullet journal you guys i am actually very proud of it So this is the cover, and then we have the index and key page. This is the future log for January to August. And then you have September to December, and then I put the postcard for like a breaker of some sort. And then here we have the 2020 strategy for me and my shop. Here is the social media cheat sheet and the passwords, which of course I had to cover. And then I put an always be creating poster at the left side. First quarter goals and focus. We start with January and the content ideas. And then the YouTube tracker, blog and Instagram tracker, and mandatories. Ads Expenses Tracker, Instagram Insights Tracker, Monthly Analysis, and Food Page. So thanks for watching this video and I hope you like it. Make sure to comment down below your thoughts and I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye!